Hello everyone. This is the 22nd part of the story Game of Thrones, The Prideful One. Chapter 106 Empty, that was the only word I could use to describe Casterly Rock right now, there were no men to defend it, nothing to stop us, and I couldn't but be apprehensive of the idea that Tywin had let us take hold of his castle, without a fight, I didn't have to be a genius to see something was clearly wrong, Tywin was not man to give up, and that was an unshakable fact about him, which is why I knew, the old lion was making his play. What play? I still had no idea, after all, my ravens had yet to update me in the situation, but even without their information, I still had a general idea as to why he had abandoned Casterly Rock. Because he had nothing to protect there, not for now, no gold or food, he had taken everything, like he did with High Garden, leaving me with lands that served at the moment no purpose, but even though logically speaking I understood why he did, I never expected him to do it in the first place. Not a single coin, or bread, even the people are starving. Ned muttered with clear anger on his voice, he left how people to die. I had Lord Stark, wondering what he expected from the coldest player in the game, Tywin only cared about his legacy, and if he had to lose a few times to keep it, he would not hesitate to do it. That was him, someone ready to give everything, for his goal, Tywin is a man of numbers, he had no time to move an army to protect Casterly Rock against us, he also knows that he can't defeat Neltharion, so he must be trying to delay us while we secure the lands while he finds a way to kill what he considers to be my best weapon. Little did the old lion know, I wasn't going to take his bait, I would not give him the time he needed to prepare, because whether he liked it or not, his time had come. So what are our orders? Oberyn inquired as he limped to my side, still recovering from his injuries. We move forward, I informed the lords. What about Casterly Rock? John Targaryen asked. We will have time to deal with this place later, for now, we need to destroy those who sit in my throne, I stated, leaving no room for questions or doubts, I had delayed this moment long enough, by mercy they Lannisters had survived, but everything must come to an end. It's not like you will lose anything, Oberyn nodded, pointing out the fact Tywin had moved everything, not that he had much to move, after all, his gold mines had been dry for over a decade. What about the people, your grace? Ned inquired. I sighed as I realized Lord Stark had a point, these people that the old lion had left to starve by taking their crops were my subjects, and a good king helps its people, I will leave some food, and for the moment that's all I can spare, I stated, after all, there was no room for too much kindness in the harsh reality of war. I will see to it, Ned Stark nodded, not completely satisfied with my answer but happy nonetheless. Tywin Lannister point of view. Leaving Casterly Rock, to his hands was a hard decision, a very hard one to make, I had but no choice, with the men I had close all I would do was weaken our own cause even more. For now, I would have to let him win, for now. In the meantime, I had to find an efficient way to deal with his dragon, the only thing keeping him alive and ahead of me in the game, all the other things he had at his disposal like the almost endless amount gold he had or his army composed of men that were fearlessly loyal didn't matter, everything was nothing but easy to eliminate, everything about him was easy to destroy, expect that dragon, if he had brought the other two with him too that I heard he left in Essos, well being honest he would probably be on the throne, drinking wine out of my skull if that was the case. But unfortunately for me, dealing with a dragon was, something the libraries could not help me with, all the books said the same, they were immune to poison with scales harder than steel, and fire hotter than the sun. But that dragon was far from being my only problem, Jamie, I had to save my heir, my only son, I knew he was alive, because I would know thanks to Dorne if he died, I knew the snakes, and they would not miss the chance to brag about his death. Lord Hand, Varys said as he entered my office, announcing his presence. Varys, get to the point. I sighed. I had no time for his riddles and tricks. We both have an enemy in common, and together we might stand a chance, Varys stated. By all men, tell me what is your idea. I chuckled drilly, Poison. Now he is immune, killing him in fight. Varys smiled. Sometimes you have to fight fire with fire. My eyes widened at the revelation, wildfire. Sir Barris Tan sell me point of view. I had been tasked by my king to protect and serve the queen and the royal babies, making sure they were always safe, with no warriors. Our king probably has the crown by this point already, Daisy said as she approached me. Yes, I chuckled. Nothing will stop my cousin, 
We bears are stubborn, Daisy added, as she started to walk away from me. That much is true, I inwardly chuckled. Ronard Mormont point of view. I smiled as I contemplated what awaited me in the near future, a throne to call my own, therefore melting the ugly piece of furniture, the pleasure of killing Joffrey, and the opportunity to reunite with my family. Unfortunately for me, that wasn't all the things the future had in store for me, things like the fight between champions, the light within me, and the horde of walkers that one day would come across the wall. God or no, I would win this, and I would do it not because of what John thinks, after all, I didn't fight for humanity and I certainly didn't face the Night King because he was evil, no. The real reason was my family, my sweet little angels. I wanted to give them a better tomorrow, and a safe world to grow in, as safe as it could get here anyways. HRNNN, things good will be, YRSSS. But darkness is moving forward I see. YRSSS, the corn must be balanced. Rode a cod with wisdom. We will be ready for that great value version of the Lich King. I nodded, after Ali, I refused to die at the hands of a creature that had taken hundreds of years to complete a single task, breaking a fucking wall. Existence is meaningless. Oh God, the depressing meter was back, not the raven I needed right now, I thought you were in mandatory therapy by the ravens. Life finds a way, so that others can hear it painful truth. Chapter 107 The very next morning, I decided to start moving south with the entire force of my army to King's Landing, the sooner the better, after all it would take me around two months to get all my army to them, and being that my intention was to strike the city before they could come with a plausible strategy to fend me off, I had to move fast. My ravens had informed that Cersei and her father had acquired all the wildfire the Mad King had commissioned during his time, and most recently what Illyrio had ordered, having every single drop of that well hidden under King's Landing, ready to be used. But that was just the tip of the iceberg, not only they had all the wildfire in the world right now, but they also pretended to use it as a safety measure to keep me out of the city M, blowing everyone, enemies and allies alike with the explosion. Which is why I wanted to strike before they succeeded in making King's Landing a walking bomb, more than it already was. That amount of wildfire was too dangerous, and while I was immune to fire-related weapons, my soldiers were not. But I had something they still haven't accounted for thanks to the massive lack of information they had about me. I had animals on my side, from mice to dragons, but the question was how to use them to neutralize the wildfire. Small animals like rats and mice could probably delay the explosion by blowing on the candles used as a fuse for the explosion, but that would only delay them a bit. Then again, I had no idea how many rats and mice were in King's Landing, but if the stories about the city were right, I would have more rats under my control than men in this continent that was considering what Oberyn had said about the city being a rat nest. Which if that was the case, taking the city would be a piece of cake, one rat was harmless, kinda, but thousands, no millions of them, well that was a biblical force to be reckoned with. Quite literally. Now that I think about it, that sounds like the best idea to eliminate the wildfire in King's Landing and on the way fix the smell situation going on there. I smiled remembering a small fact about rats, they eat shit and not in the metaphorical way, rats and their family practitioners of the art of coprophagy aka the art of eating shit, and while it was true they prefer to eat other things like nuts and berries, they would eat poop if needed, and with millions of them. I might have the solution to the sewer problem in King's Landing, if not, at the very least they would be useful to improve the sewer flow, stuff. In short they would be my secret weapon, and personal plumbers, maybe I will call the Mario gang. Ka, what are our orders? One of my ravens asked. In what can I assist you, O great hunter, one of my newest birds, a falcon that apparently had climbed the ladder of ranks within the animal part of my army, said. Bring me rats from King's Landing, I informed the two feathery warriors, being very clear with the fact I wanted them alive. As you wish. The falcon nodded with enthusiasm as he darted out of the window at full speed. Caw, the new guy sure is eager to help, even the falcons see the might of the corn you provide, Caw. Falcon Falcon Falcone Falcone or point of view. It took me months, but I had finally managed to enter the Raven Circle of Knights, as its newest member, serving the greatest hunter of them all, the Cornbringer, our master. I was the first falcon to reach this high, and I would not disappoint my master and embarrass the Pride Falcon clan by failing him. He wanted rats? He would get them all. I Falcon Falcon Falcone Falconier or FFFF for short, 
had promised him rats and FFFF always delivers. Caw! FFFF wait! I stopped flying, as I waited for a raven to catch up, caw, you sure fly fast, caw, anyway, make sure you report to the raven in charge in King's Landing. I nodded, I will. Caw! Good, then go. Make the Raven Knight Order proud. I didn't have to be told twice, because that was my plan all along, and perhaps just perhaps if I worked hard enough, the great and benevolent Cornbringer would make an order of falcons, something the little chicks could look up to. Tywin Lannister point of view. Cersei was not the smartest of my children, but at times, she would have great ideas, like hoarding the wildfire under the city, as a last resource to take Ronard with us to hell should he win. Not that I wanted to resort to that, it was frankly in strategy that screamed we thought he was going to win, and I didn't think that, not entirely at the very least, we still had a chance, the only real threat was that overgrown lizard he had on his side. Without that creature, victory was attainable, because no matter how good of a warrior he is, with strategy and numbers he would fall under my feet. So in the end as I formulated a plan to kill those dragons, I indulged my daughter letting her turn the city into a bomb while I used half of the wildfire as my own weapon, to fight the advantage he had over us with that dragon. Fighting fire with fire like the spider said, burning his men to death and if I was lucky, burning him to death. I had already set some rudimentary defenses with it, with some of them being things like explosive arrows and such, the bear was up for a surprise. After all, we lions adapt so that we can better hunt our prey. I will save you my son. Jamie, even if it means burning the Seven Kingdoms, I muttered, my son after all had a duty to complete, he had to continue the path I had built for my house, our house, and after this, he would do it whether he wanted or not, I was done with his idiotic dreams of being a knight. Olena Tyrell point of view. The young bear was moving, and it was my chance to save my house, flowers and fire don't fight, that worked but in the literal and metaphorical sense, we bent the knee to a dragon hundreds of years ago for a reason. Grandmother, but surely we can. Marjorie was still trying to find a way to keep her current arrangement, she wanted to be queen so badly that it was weighing her down, what use does the crown as if you don't live to enjoy it? You won't even make it to the wedding. Do you want to live? Or die thinking you were almost a queen? I scolded at her. But surely father and Tywin, Marjorie started to ramble once again. My son is an idiot and Tywin is outmatched, so use your brain. Even the women in my family lacked what has kept me alive so long, common sense. I, but... Marjorie started to cry. Bah, if you can't be a queen maybe your future kids can. I sighed. Chapter 108 John Targaryen Point of View King Ronard stared out of his tent, engrossed at the orange-colored morning as the sun rose over the camp. Something that I had come to learn is that Ronard enjoyed starting his mornings this way, watching the sun rise, as if it was his only moment of peace. He had spent much of his time, if not all fighting, for a better country, for the future of all humanity and while he kept everyone at bay with a smile and a sarcastic comment every now and then I knew deep down he could not keep this much longer, the stress was taxing him heavily. Deciding it was time to say hi, I cleared my throat making my presence known to the king. Ronard in return took a deep breath without even looking at me as he said. Tis a beautiful morning, is it not, Dot? Aye, it is a beautiful morning, sire, I nodded with a smile. But we must make way to King's Landing, as to follow your plan, of striking fast and certain. Preparations have been made to depart after you break your fast. The horses are saddled and await your command. Oh, yeah, Ronard chuckled, defeated by my own words, ha ha but you are right. I just follow your orders, don't blame me, blame the game, I smirked at him. The king turned his attention to me, looking at me with a smirk of his own. Ah, let me guess, you've been hanging out with Oberyn? I gave the king a mischievous grin as I asked, was it not you, that told more like this? Once again defeated by my own words, Ronard laughed, as he stood up, aye, it was me who told you all those things. I, I nodded, then my king, Shall we go to break your fast? I, I don't see why not, let go eat some breakfast, the king nodded. Tormund point of view. My entire tribe was dead, and so were almost everyone I knew, and here I was running desperately through the dead cold forest. Trying to get into the safe areas those weird looking kids created. Fear was a luxury beyond the wall, 
but here I was with my heart racing as I began to panic at the sounds of many creatures running behind me, and I couldn't help but feel fear to what was chasing me. The images of the dead rising and hunting my people down were burned into my mind, making it so every time I close my eyes I see them screaming in pain, begging to be saved. I was both angry at myself for not being able to defend my tribe and afraid of dying without being able to fight back, those two emotions pushed me to run faster, the weird looking children said soon someone with the power to face these creatures would come. Fuck fuck fuck. They were gaining on me, and my stamina was depleting swiftly as I struggled against the weight of the food I had gathered for those who had survived the slaughter. I could hear the screams behind me, the growls of hunger and desire to kill me but I didn't turn to look, fuck that I wanted to live long enough to help the magical fucker deal with these pests. Go and gather food, I panted. It will be easy, they said. As I was about to make it to the hideout protected with the magic of those weird looking kids, I felt a dull pain in my abdomen. I grunted in pain as I looked down where I felt the hit and saw an arrow jutting from my stomach, taking a deep breath I took the arrow with my right hand as I withdrew the said arrow swiftly out of my body as the blood pooled around the wound, great they learned how to use bow and arrows. Get the food. Let's go torment. Iger hissed at me, as she and one of the weird-looking children helped me with the food I had gathered, taking all the weight off me. I turned around to where the creature was coming, pulling my axe from my back as my free hand clutched instinctively at my abdomen. You two run, I will stop the fuckers right here. As if on cue the disgusting creature appeared missing his jaw and with its left arm dangling at an unnatural angle holding a bow, all this package accompanied by the rotten smell of decay that was beyond disgusting. It seemed the horde had stopped chasing me after a while, because I could see only one of them, which was a relief, with that in mind I steeled myself, getting ready for battle I glared into the creature's milky white eyes, devoid of any emotion, nothing but darkness. Come and get me, you undead piece of shit. The walker in return grinned mockingly as he shook his head. Stop running from your fate, why would you avoid something set on stone? I will kill every living creature in the world eventually, don't fight a pointless battle. What great offer. Let me think about that. How about no? Fuck you. Like I was going to pick death, fuck that, I might be afraid, but I wasn't an idiot. Very well, live for another day, but soon, soon your children of the forest will fail to hold me back, and I will consume you like I did with your tribe, and like I will do with the world, the walker smiled, which was disturbing without a jaw. All I heard is the whines of a bitch to scare to fight the one that is coming to fuck you. The weird looking children, and the old creepy man that was somehow fused with a tree told me of someone called the light champion or the prince that was promised was coming, and that him and him alone would defeat this fucker. The young bear will fall in time, death is not a matter of if, but when, the walker growled at me. Sorry. I don't speak bitch. I chuckled as I threw my axe at the monster, cutting his head off, god that felt good. Egret point of view. Tormund once again decided to fight the walkers, instead of running into the safe circle, he's probably dead. I doubt it, the children of the forest shook her head, he was facing one, and one in bad state, he will probably come victorious, but I admit your human friend is reckless. He is. I nodded, he knows nothing. Ha ha ha, Tormund's signature laugh caught my attention as he ran towards us, but before he even managed to approach us the children of the forest attacked him throwing a firebomb at him. Hey! The fuck? Tormund jumped out of the way. What is the meaning of this? I asked the children. He was marked. The children stated, if the Night King marks someone, they become a beacon for him. Oh fuck! I will turn. Tormund started to panic, and so was I. No, but if you enter the safe area, with the mark, you would be giving him the access to enter and destroy us, the children of the forest explained. Any way to solve this? I asked. Yes, I can erase the mark. The children nodded. Then why the fuck you attacked me? Tormund growled. Because you were a few steps away from killing us all, the children stated with a calm tone making both me a torment go cold in realization. Chapter 109 Marching and arriving at King's Landing would take me and my army a couple weeks, but this time would not be wasted. I had sent one of my hawks to King's Landing with a mission, and mission that would if my plan worked, ensure my victory. Things of course were a little bit more complicated than I had originally thought. Tywin had apparently decided to weaponize part of the wildfire, 
and I had to reluctantly admit, his ideas were good. He wanted to dwindle my army with long-range attacks, using the wildfire in a variety of ways that showed why he was feared among his peers. But regardless of what he tried, he would die, and I would prevail. All he was doing was delaying the inevitable. One month away from the throne, one month away before I focus on the real war beyond the wall. Tormin point of view. The battle is lost. A calm voice spoke aloud, full of sorrow and loss, it was one of the few survivors that had managed to escape the Night King. Humanity, will fall, I don't know why we even try. Arangan, one of the warriors, had survived said as he lifted up a chipped and damaged spear, raising it above his head for a brief moment before he plunged it downward. Fuck you all. I growled with anger, how could they even think of giving up, even if the champion of shit doesn't come to fight this monster we must fight? Even if we are going to lose. We must fucking fight. We are not going to let this fucker win that easy. Everyone looked at me for a second, I could see they were tired of this, after all, we had been fighting for months making making no progress at all, while every battle would weaken us, the monster would only grow stronger, I knew this was impossible to win, but I'd rather make that fucker work for my life, because I won't willingly give it to him. We are fighting, waiting for a champion that might not even exist. Orangan shouted angry, what are our proofs? An old man that can't move? Or the bunch of freaks that follow him? Since when do the free folk needs a hero? Igret said with a bored tone, clearly tired of this facade, if he exists good, if he doesn't then let's do what we've been doing for hundreds of years, let's survive. Finally someone with fucking brains. I growled in approval. The champion is occupied right now, Leaf, one of the weird looking children, said. On what? Orangan scoffed, still not believing a word. He is fighting a war on the other side of the wall, because he knows that the only hope of winning is by having a united front, Leaf answered not paying any attention to Orangan's rude attitude, if he comes ignoring his problems beyond the wall without that united front he will lose, humanity stopped the long night once, but they stood together for it, and this time the Night King not only has bigger numbers but is stronger himself. So is our champion, a raven with three eyes spoke, nothing is like it should be, but we must prevail, this is beyond our personal desires or wants. This is a battle to decide if humanity survives or not. I couldn't help but still be startled at the fact the old tree guy could speak through ravens, it was unsettling. You heard the two creeps. We must stay strong. Fuck the champion if he doesn't come. Fuck him if he comes. But don't give up. I shouted. Leaf stared at me before leaving. Well, not the desired result. The three-eyed raven muttered as he watched the people slowly calming down, but it will do for now. Ben Jin Stark point of view. It has been almost three months since I left to scout the area, as it was one of my many missions as the first ranger of the watch, and what I found, brutally murdered my brothers, the others, I had found them before, but this time they were, different, they moved in an almost sentient pattern, they weren't the mindless creatures I remembered, not that they were geniuses now, but they were certainly different. They moved and act, in ways that one could think were strategies, to hunt and corner living creatures, I had survived their first attack by sheer luck and the sacrifices my brothers did buying me time, but in the process of running away from them I had lost any way to go back to the wall. The others had made sure of that, so while I was alive, I wasn't sure for how long I would be, food was scarce to the point I had killed my horse just to survive, but that would only last me so much. I had to find a way to return and warn my brothers. Unlike my first encounters with the others this time I knew they were preparing to cross, and we needed to be ready for it. I really hope John and everyone else is okay in the wall, I muttered with a deep sigh, the last time I saw John my nephew he wanted to become a ranger like me, and explore beyond the wall, and I couldn't help but wonder if he was okay. Tyrion Lannister point of view. Father and sister had gone mad, utilizing one of the most, if not the most volatile substance in the world to fight in the war it was most likely we would kill our own men with it that any of Ronard's. But at the very least father wanted to weaponize the substance, unlike my dear sister that wanted to make King's Landing a fucking bomb, with the not at all argument of, if we can't have the city, no one can. Was I the only one seeing the fucking red flags? I knew my sister was crazy but this was beyond mad King crazy. And worse of all, is that father approved of her idea, I mean he didn't say it but everyone knew that if he didn't like something that something would never come to happen. Which means that he silently approved of her idea. 
perhaps it was best for the seven kingdoms to have someone like Ronard sitting on that rotten thing they call a throne, God knows anything is better than Joffrey. Family or logic, what an awful situation I find myself in, I sighed. Joffrey Baratheon point of view. I still didn't have Ronard, his dragon bitch and his babies in front of me. This was unacceptable. I was the king, my words were the words of a god. Because I was a god. I was born to rule the world and do with it anything I please, because everyone within this stupid world was my toy. And as the god king I was. I wanted to see that pretender suffering. I wanted to see his face as his dragon bitch wife was being raped by every man in my army. I wanted to see his face as his children suffer the same fate, and just when all his family starts to drown in their own blood and waste, just then he has nothing left to lose, I would take my sweet time ending him, and yet he was still free. Avoiding my divine punishment. I am the king. I am a god. And I want my enemies suffering. I want it. I shouted. I need a raise, caw. Chapter 110 King's Landing was just one day ahead, and while the throne was just sitting there, waiting for me I had to be careful. Tywin had done an amazing job weaponizing the wildfire against me, with catapults ready to throw all he had at me, if I wasn't careful I would lose many able men, a commodity I couldn't afford to lose, considering that I needed every man and woman I could possibly have to fight against the army of the undead. I had yet to hear from the hawk I sent to King's Landing, he was possibly busy with his assignment, which was weird on its own, considering what I know about the city he should have the rat or mice I requested right now, but like they say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. With that mentality at hands, I had created a backup plan, with the same objective, of neutralizing the wildfire, and while originally I wanted to destroy it because it was a very unstable substance, I had decided to do otherwise, mostly because it would be a very useful weapon against the others. My plan was simple, capturing the ones with the authority to use the wildfire, the Grand Maester, Cersei Lannister and Tywin Lannister, and just in case, the idiots sitting on my throne, Joffrey Baratheon, they were the only ones that had the authority to use said substance, how to kidnap them was the hard part. I had to infiltrate, or corrupt someone within their ranks, maybe Elena or Tyrion, they both had their reasons to betray the current regimen, Olena because she was old but not blind, she probably knew by this point I was going to win, and Tyrion. He hated his family, at least everyone but his brother, though it remains a mystery if any of them will actually ally themselves with me. But it was clear that an idea was at least worth trying, but the real question was, who to send for this mission? We should rest before the battle, Oberyn said, bringing me back to reality. Taking a deep breath, I turned to look at him, sounds about right, I don't want anyone too tired. I will start setting up the camps, John added from afar. Very well, I nodded, still trying to figure out a way to get within the enemy lines, not only would the wildfire be useful for me, but neutralizing it would save a lot of my army. And then it hit me, a way to get to Tyrion, whores, all I needed was a few willing whores to chat with Tyrion. Let's see if you really love your disgusting family Tyrion, or if you have any common sense, I chuckled. Daenerys' point of view. After some time, I had finally managed to stabilize the cities we had conquered, erasing every single rebel, before it became a problem. And while a part of me wanted to go out and finish what my husband had started, I decided to wait, I just couldn't risk the life of my babies, nothing is worth that. But this sounding piece, was a double-edged sword for me, now that I had nothing but menial tasks to do, to keep myself occupied, I was ruthlessly reminded my husband was on the other side of the sea, fighting for our throne, and while I knew he was probably the best warrior on the known world. I couldn't help but worry about his safety. He had Neltharion on his side, he would protect him if anything went wrong, I knew he would, if I was the mother of dragons, he was the father of dragons, and his sons loved him, I knew that. Neltharion, Crow, and Regal loved him, and they would die for him if push came to shove. Mama, Gerard smiled at me, blowing me some kisses, while his sister took a nap above Crow. Yes, my sweet little bear, Mama is here. I smiled at him, kissing him on the cheek. I never thought loving something so much was possible, until I became a mother, it was as if they became my sole reason to live, I loved them so much that it hurt. Olena Tyrell point of view. It took some time to convince my granddaughter of my plan, she wanted to be queen so bad she almost considered dying, but not all fights are worth fighting for, 
sometimes it is better to let things go. Now it was just a matter of convincing my son, who was a very, very, very stupid man to go with us to Ronard's side, which was easier said than done. Every time I spoke with the man, he would ramble about, how could I even think of giving up the chance of Marjorie being the queen of the seven kingdoms? Morose thoughts, but he would go accept my plan, and I would save this house, regardless of his compliance, I would stop House Tyrell from sinking any lower, after all, his compliance has never been a factor on my plans, but a mother must always try, even if she already knows what their idiotic children will do and choose. A mother must always try. Too bad, I had to drug my own child to save him. Tyrion Lannister point of view. Why was I even here? Fighting for a king that will never amount to nothing, while maybe being even more crazy than the Mad King. Fighting for a family that doesn't and will never love me? Or was I perhaps fighting for Tywin's respect, either way? I wasn't sure anymore. Why was I even supporting this, I knew the moment this war ended. I would meet my end in a mysterious accident, probably orchestrated by my dear sister. Or father, or nephew, frankly anybody but Jamie would try and kill me, I had long served my purpose. Perhaps if I helped Ronard, he would be lenient with Jamie. There isn't enough wine to deal with this shit, I muttered. Jamie Lannister point of view. Was father really capable of defeating Ronard? My entire life father had been something I considered unbeatable, a mountain that can't be moved, but this kid was, very good, and while I chanted to myself over and over again that, we would win no matter what, a little part of me didn't believe a word I was saying. Dragons united West Eros, and dragons the young bear was commanding, you don't get more prophetical than that around here, a bear that married a dragon, a bear that commands dragons. So perhaps my doubts were not unfounded. I miss you so much Cersei, I muttered. You will see her in hell soon, from afar I could see Ronard coming to my cell. Hell, what a nice place I suppose, better than here, I shot back. I suppose, but you are probably wrong about something. Ronard chucked, taking a seat in front of my cage. On what? I smiled, trying to show him, nothing would bring my mood down. Well on the sins that are bringing you to hell. Ronard smirked at me, banging your sister? Nah. I mean gross but not something I consider you should go to hell for, reproducing with your sister? I mean, maybe? Joffrey is a pretty big sin in itself. Killing the Mad King aka my father-in-law? That's probably the highlight of your life to be honest. I actually applaud you for that. No, the real reason you are going to help is because, you never killed the real monsters within the kingdom, just because they were family. How dare he? I did what I could, by what right does the bear judge the lion? By the right of the sword. Ronard calmly replied. You pretend to be a hero and yet, you are going to kill children, my chi, nephews, I stopped myself from admitting anything. I will, Ronard nodded. Then if you succeed, I'll be waiting for you in hell, after the gods judge your sins. I smiled at him. What are gods? To a non-believer, Ronard chuckled as he started to walk away, nor without leaving me with some parting words. Don't think so high of the gods little cat, they are assholes. This marks the end of part 22 of the story Game of Thrones, the prideful one. Thank you for listening. Please like the video and hit the subscribe button to listen more. Hit the bell icon to get notified of all the new content uploaded to the channel ASAP.